Ladies and gentlemen, a couple of days ago, you might remember that I uploaded this YouTube video where I surpassed my all-time high blitz rating on chess.com. Since then, I did what any normal person would do. I played some chess games on my phone while sitting on the toilet or laying in bed, and I got my rating up to 2783 last night. And today, I wanted to surpass that elusive 2800 legendary rating in front of my live audience while streaming. This video is going to take you through the four games that I played against my Russian opponent, and at the end, and just like last time, there was a small charity surprise. This could be history or it could be failure. I play my best chess with, you know, on the toilet. Like, let's just let's just keep it very honest with each other. Anyway, we're 28, we're 2780. Um, let's go. Very clearly a human being. They have like 7,000 games played. Okay, it's a uh, English. Let's turn it into a Dutch. Is there an Anglo-Dutch like peace treaty of some sort? Okay, so we're just playing a mainline Dutch defense. It's a mainline Leningrad. Uh, I'm going to play uh, E6. This is known as the Christmas tree variation. Uh, the idea is that you try to play Knight C6 and E5. And now when they play D5, which is normal, you at least can go here. And you already have a little bit of like fighting going on here. You can also play Knight B4. Okay, so this is a very like direct... It, this might this might open up in a very wild way now. So now rook d1 and bishop g5 or knight g5 are very standard. Queen e8 or queen e7. I think queen... But, you know, I gotta be careful because queen e8, there's like some sort of... Okay, let me go queen e8. Knight b5 is a very standard move here. But maybe I have rook f7, knight g5, rook d7. Something like that. Right, so knight d5 just comes and gets this. I just go back to no that's a terrible move i have a feeling i can like take on e4 like what if i play like knight e4 knight c7 something weird i can also go queen f7 rook f7 rook f7 rook d7 looks pretty stupid but might work also fe4 i'm gonna do it i'm gonna get wild i'm gonna play f takes e4 if knight c7, queen f7 hits this, the knight takes, and then I take, and that looks good for me. Knight f6, bishop f6, queen e4, bishop f5 also looks good for me. If the knight moves, which it does, uh, knight d4, I guess there's knight f6. What if I take now? Takes, and then knight d4. Okay, now I hit the queen. F file is open. This is here. This is here, maybe. That I did not expect, actually. Something tells me this is wrong. Like, don't I have knight e2? Or bishop g4, even? This looks terrible for my opponent. This actually looks really, really bad. Because don't I just have like 92 in here? This just looks like I'm completely overwhelming. Wow. Okay, well, I guess desperate times call for desperate measures. Actually, this is maybe not so bad. Sacrificing the rook for the knight. Maybe you take on e4. Um, but I think I have bishop f3, and that should just be lights out. So this move will deflect any defense. And then I can play... Oh, I have queen e1 after. I think I just have queen e1. Someone said queen e4 hangs... That hangs a queen, buddy. That would not have been a good move. Why do you play e6 if you're going to play e5? Because you can't play e5 right away. Yeah, queen c7 was just not a good move. Because it completely disregarded what's going on on the other side of the board. Now if the knight moves anywhere, I have queen e1 and bishop takes. I'm also going to play rook c8. To just win a tempo and then rook down to not not c1 c2 um yeah i mean a lot of you you know a lot of people would get scared with this queen infiltrating but there's no threats i'm i'm you don't need to worry about this pawn when there's a king on the other side being slaughtered having said that you know we're very reactive people so we see something like this and um yeah dutch is a great opening that was that that was really good i'm glad i kind of what i just free 
So it's just free. It's so much, it's so much more nerve-wracking when you're trying to set a rating goal. Because you just constantly think you're going to be blundering something. I think my opponent's going to go here to try to go here. Um, or they're just going to resign. That's a new peak, 2788. Let's go. All right, Trumpowski. Ah, this one. Okay, this one's a little bit annoying. I'm going to play an early H4. See if my opponent, like, what, what they want to happen. I think that my opponent's going to go here. But, okay, plays H5. Not a bad move. Knight D2. Recently, I don't know. I've been playing decent chess. I don't know what's been going on. It's weird. But this is going to be a very confrontational game. Wait a minute. I think it's just a blunder. I think I can... I think I can, like, take and play, like, knight e4. So sometimes in the Trumpowski, you can do this thing in the opening where you kind of punish their setup. Like, this is a bad structure. And, and there you go. There's my opponent. Uh, wow, what a weird move. Um, how about knight e4? I'm just threatening knight d6 and knight c5. This is really bad. And now if queen takes, rook takes. So I, I just get this huge lead in development. Okay, so the opponent is just, is just castling and giving me a pawn. However, for the cost of that pawn, they probably get back the lead in development. So now my opponent's going to attack my knight. I guess I have to go back. Okay, I'm just going to develop. I mean, I'm up a pawn, but it's a game of chess. Like, okay, that's a move, I guess. Let's block the center. This is the benefit of my opponent having nothing in the center. I can just put my knight there. And it's just very good. I'm going to go bishop e2. I probably... I have to be careful about knight g4. So I was going to castle. Knight g4 could be annoying. Um, okay, what if I just take and play bishop f3? Like this. I'm just up, I'm just, this is just very easy. I'm just up a pawn. Like, okay, like the more pieces you simplify, it's just going to become a winning endgame. So, so if bishop takes, I'm just going to take this attacking the rook. Or maybe I'll even take with a pawn and then just get it into a rook endgame. But bishop f3 might have been bad. No, no, I'll just take. What am I talking about? I'll just take. Yeah, and now, okay, but now king e2 or rook d1 even. King e2, rook d1. Now, here's the thing. The, the magic number is how many, how many rooks do you trade? Do you trade one or two rooks? If I trade two, probably I have good chances. Probably I have good chances. Uh, but I gotta think. How am I gonna do this? A4 is always a move as well. Just to open things up. Let's go knight d4. Offering the trade. Bishop for knight. Okay, they take. There's a big question. What do I take back with? Should I? Oh, man. I'm going to go pawn takes. E takes. E takes. To get the four on two. So I've got one, two, three, four versus two. Very big decision. I'm basically relying on the fact that these three beat these four. Because his pawns are doubled. Put my king in the middle. I prevent the pawn expansion. Like, a3, and then I'm just gonna... We're gonna fight for the open file. Oh, and I can block the territory. I can play f4. I should be winning pretty easily. So, rook here, and then rook here. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Th this is the way we do this. You have to lift the rook. Lift the rook so that you can get the other rook behind it. And then when they take here, here, they're gonna play rook e8. Just drop the king back to d2. I think this is going to be the million dollar move so that I, I can not, not rook f1, I can play rook e1. And now I'm just winning because the 4 on 3 on this side will never work and the 4 on 2 will always win. So even if a4 to try to stop me, I'll play b3, we'll trade, and then I'll play c4. Um, okay, I guess, well, I can just play f3. That just kicks out the rook completely. Also have a4, which is a very important move. In fact, should I just play this, takes, takes? No, I think I'm going to go here. Yeah, this is easily winning now. Because again, even though I'm a pawn up, it feels like I'm up two. It feels like I'm up two pawns. So now I'm going to play rook e5. Thank you, Les V. That's a 50 gifted subs 
Unbelievable. What a massive sub bomb. Um, and now we're going to take that pawn. They're going to take take. Now I think my opponent's going to play rook b8. Yep, to try to go here. Uh, king c2 I can play, rook e8. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, now the worst, the worst part about this for my opponent is that there's no way to infiltrate. Like, I'm going to go rook e5. Right. That, yeah, I kind of figured that was going to happen. Um, how am I going to do this? King b2. Okay, let's go here. They're going to check me. Um... I gotta do this in such a way that I'm not going to blunder anything. Check. All right, I just have king a4, no? Let me go king c4. I'll just go to the middle. Let's go to the middle. I'll go a4. Gonna get some counterplay. Let's go a5. Check. And just push. We just have too many pawns. We just have too many pawns. d7, and the game is over. They can't take. So you have to invest in your in your pawns in the end game. Yeah, so d7, rook d1, rook d5, takes, takes, king c7, a6. So here, here, the rook cuts off, like this, takes, takes, and now the king cannot stop two pawns. That's it. The king is outside of the square. And then resigns. Nice, another new peak. Let's go. Here we go. Okay. Worked last time. The Dutch, again. I mean, I'm going to play the exact same way because my opponent showed me no reason not to. Some people will get stubborn at this point and just play the exact same way. My opponent might play like rookie one. Uh, this is not a very popular line because it's not very good in classical chess. It doesn't score too well. Okay, so b3, there is something wrong with this move. It's just not... I don't think it's the... I think I have knight e4 now. I think the, the fact that my opponent destabilized this knight allows me to play this move. And then I can play like knight c6, here, here, and then play d5. I think this is the idea. But... Um, thank you for the uh, resubs, guys. I appreciate the support. A lot of energy in chat today. Pushing me to be, me, be great. Yeah, I can play e6, b6. Sure. You know, my problem is I don't know any opening super well with black, so I just kind of play whatever. Can I just play knight takes d4? Okay, they want this, right? So what about takes? Like, I don't have a consistent opening that I play all the time with black, so I'll just play whatever. Uh, because I know them all a little bit. Like, I know, probably know the Dutch pretty well. I know, I know e6b6 very well. Um, but yeah, my, my issue is I don't have a consistent solid opening option. So let's go queen e7. I think black has no problems in the opening anymore. And now if I can successfully land e4, first of all, I get connect four. So Eric Rosen is happy. Um, that's not a bad move. So here, here, can I take? No, cause this. Hmm. So if we have a big trade, my opponent goes knight d4. I can go... Knight e5, yeah, Caro, I know the Caro very well, yes. Is rook d5 a, a move? Take, 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 knight d4. A little bit annoying. I, I'm gonna go here. Yes, Caro we know pretty well. I don't, I don't think I have any advantage anymore, really. Like, I have no, no chance for an advantage after knight d4, but it's completely symmetrical structure. Um, here, there's this, so I can't allow that. I, I probably just can't allow that, period. So I think I have to take. It's too, too active. Um, I mean, I guess bishop to e6, and now just rook d8. It's probably just equal. c5, kick the rook out. Maybe a5, a4. Like, is there a way? I gotta think like a super GM here. I know it's impossible because we're not a super GM, but. Oh, and c5 allows rook d6. I'm going to go a5, a4. The thing is, my opponent can't really do anything. f3 is coming for sure. There's f3, yeah. Uh, because they want to activate their pieces. Mm, that was bad by me. I probably shouldn't have allowed that, but. Okay, I got to speed up. It's a mildly unpleasant position for me, I think, but my bishop is very good. And even if I allow rook d6, I just have rook e8, and there's 
not really any chance that my opponent breaks through. Especially because I'm doing a decent job controlling the queen side. So if e4 now, I can just take it. Put my king here. It's probably just a draw. Which I lose 4 points for. Wow, it's plus 4, minus 12. Absolutely brutal. Am I ever going to create chances here? I don't... Like, part of me wants to. I feel like I could beat this guy. But, uh... Okay, how about this for an idea? What about a4? Wait, that just hangs a pawn. Okay, he didn't even take. <laughs> He's so afraid of me. I'm just going to isolate that pawn. I'm going to create that pawn as a permanent target. And then I'm going to play rook d8. Like this. I think. Now if we trade the rooks, my opponent loses that pawn. That might be a good transformation for me. And actually, I'm also threatening takes. Yeah, so now I threaten takes. And rook a4, no? b5? Oh, wow. b5, yeah? Wow. What about takes, takes, rook b4? And then rook b2? Rook b4 and rook b2? I think there was d5 there. But then I, now I just take. So if the king was further away, rook b2 would be winning. But since the king is close, it can just come and guard. So rook b2 technically doesn't threaten anything. But it just makes it really difficult for my opponent to move. Okay, so uh, I can take, they take, I t aren't I just winning there? What, what is this? Isn't this just a win for me? Now I'm up a pawn in a rook endgame. That can't be good for my opponent. And then I just play rook b2. That was easy. We just beat a Russian in an endgame. Who would, who would have thought that would happen? It's just winning. I'm going to pick up a second pawn. Check. I win the pawn. Okay, now we're two pawns up. It's GG. I mean, it's GG because I'll give the pawn away, really. That's, that's why it's GG. Um, that's kind of inconvenient, I guess. I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to win on time. Like, worst comes to worst, we're going to win on time, right? So, king d5, king c6. I'm actually not even going to take the pawn. Just going to guard. Rook f6. Okay, or that. Check. Bring you all the way back. Don't blunder anything. It's easy dubs. King is in a safe spot. Just got to find a way. Okay, let's trade rooks. I'm going to play, I guess, h5. You know, not the cleanest of conversions, but... Uh... Yeah, we're going to win on time. There it is. All right. I mean, sometimes you got to dig deep. You got to find another way to win. Here's e4. A3 Sicilian. Go knight C6, please. Don't go G6. Okay. This is also pretty fun. That's not fun. This is not a very fun line to play against, but it's fine. Knight F3. I guess I'll go bishop B5 check. This is not very fun. It's kind of boring to play these lines, but it's life. Could have taken on C5, actually. In fact, now I will. Now I'm going to give a check. Something feels off about playing like this, but I don't exactly know what it is. Like, what about d4 now to attack the bishop? And then knight g5. I'm trying to, like, punish the opening here. Like, knight g5, for example. Oh, my opponent could just castle, actually. Yeah, they, that, yeah, yeah, he just, he gets out of there. He, do, he doesn't want no part. I don't blame the guy, to be honest. All right, well, now, I mean, I, I, I guess I, ugh. I just did all this fancy work, and now I'm not even going to take the bishop. I didn't take because I didn't really like the fact that if I go all the way down, they open up their rook, they open up their bishop. I don't like it. So I think I'm going to, I'm actually going to, oh, well, now I will take. I mean, if you really offer it to me, I'm going to go take it. Because now I solidified my center. Can I just take? It would be really brutal to blunder like a, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back to just cover this. Just gonna bring you back. Oh, that's a good move. Completely forgot about that. That's a problem. Hmm. Uh ugh. Blech. Let's just take ugh. I don't like what's happening in the opening here. 
It's really bad, actually. Okay. Let's try it. Well, let's hope they go here and just hang a knight. That would be really nice. I don't think it's going to happen, but... They want that? Oh, man. Oh, man. It's getting real bad. Now they have knight f... Do they have knight f2? I like how somebody suggested this. Just very confidently losing a knight. They do do it. Ah, <sighs> okay. Time to give them a little bit of shock. Like, whoa, I'm not winning? I'm not gonna take. I'm not even gonna indulge. This is very bad. Very, very bad opening for me. Terrible. Just went horribly wrong. Guy played a very annoying line. And I just... It's a line that, like, I sh I, I'm not supposed to mess around with. Okay, bishop e3. I'm just gonna play fast. Try to play fast. So bishop c5 on the way. Queen back. I'm only down a pawn. If I can consolidate, I'm not going to lose this game that fast. I might lose, but it won't be quick. Hopefully. Okay, here. Here, here. We're, we're, we're bad, but we're not, we're not dead lost yet. Definitely bad. Can I explain why it was a good move? Uh, the knight sack opened up my king to their rook. That's, I, I was trying to draw arrows, but I'm sorry I didn't put it into words. Um, okay, so queen b6 is a queen trade. We are dealing with a Russian, so the Russian might go for that. I don't think it's very... I don't think it's the best way to play this. But it is a way. It is definitely a way to play this. Um, I like how people in chat are writing the evaluation. Like, like I don't know who you're writing it for. If you're writing it for me, don't. Because that's cheating. If you're writing it for yourself, that... Wait, why did they do that? Am I dumb? Do I not understand something? Here I just block? Why did they do that? I don't see it. Right, so queen h5 is the idea. What about rook a2? The problem is now you're giving me- Oh, queen g3, I hung queen g3, I hung queen g3, what am I doing? I hung queen g3. That's what, that was the idea. There it is. A queenie one. I just hung it. Just completely, just completely fucking hung it. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. Unbelievable. All right. One in doubt, threaten main one. Wow. Maybe my opponent hangs mate. Who knows? Never say never. It's just mate. I don't, I, don't, I don't think they're going to hang mate, but. <laughs> Opponent's really giving me some false hopes here, man. This is, uh, this is not a very convincing conversion. Wait a minute. What is happening? What is this? Okay. Wait, what? 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 Are you kidding me? And that's why you never resign, I guess? I don't... What is... What was that? Wait. Wait, what? Dude, what? Guy just hung a rook. Yo. I am shook right now. I did not expect to have a winning position in this game. I mean, okay, uh, here? If that guy legitimately threw to get me to 2800, I'm a little bit disappointed. That's not how I wanted to hit it. Let's put it this way, I earned three of those wins, okay? I earned three of them. That last one, I mean, I don't know what that was.
So at the end of the last video, I let you know that a few members of my community wanted to make big donations to charity and they asked me which ones I wanted. Last time it was pancreatic cancer, this time it was a mix. Someone donated to the New York City Humane Society and another person donated a couple thousand dollars for congenital heart disease, especially uh, with children and babies. I urge all of you who can to donate to those who need it most. These kind of initiatives that I'm doing live on stream are pretty fun. Uh, I'm all about charity and I will be doing massive giveaways ways uh, and videos in the future where I'm donating to small streamers. That's it for this video. We are now officially 2801. I don't know what the future holds, but I'll see you in the next video for now.